All right. Uh, well, we will start. Uh, welcome. Thanks for coming. I'm John Joya, and I represent most of what I talked about the town of Philly and Elsa Bronte on the Board of Supervisors. I've been in Richmond, and I do write a bike. I'm a bike writer, but I like riding on the Bay Trail. I live uh, down at the Marina. It's great having a dedicated bike to me. Pardon? We've got a comment about the Bay Oh, they can't. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's speak. Uh, do we have to speak loud? Is that better? So you, someone want to post if they can hear us? Yeah. Okay. okay. Is that good? Okay. Better. Louder. Okay. We'll do that. We don't have a mic. So I'm John Joya. I represent this area of the Board of Supervisors, and I do ride a bike. So and I have ridden between El Sobrante and Orinda, and I know how hazardous that can be. <laughs> um, yeah, I tend to ride the Bay Trail, places like that. I have a relatively new old vintage Medici bike. I don't know if people have heard of Medici. It was a uh, or Medici, some say, and it, it was actually made in Los Angeles by these folks that came out of an Italian bike rent company. So great, I'd like to write that on the trail, on the pay trails. Um, but so tonight really is uh, designed to talk to you about uh, a proposal to create a bike lane along San Pablo de Road between El Monte and um, and the Reservoir area, and. Um, it does not include the downtown area um, because of the narrowness of the downtown. And this has been something that Public Works has studied, that we've heard a lot from the community about this. It would involve, you know, changing the lanes and reducing uh, the lane of traffic and we'll hear about what impact that has. Um, and you'll hear a traffic um, engineer study looking at doing it all the way to Appian Way or doing it a few blocks um, uh, further out from that way, and you'll see the differences. One of the things that I asked Public Works to do when and the traffic um, consultant to look at is not just level of service. You know, level of service is this standard that's utilized around the county, but it doesn't mean much to the average person. But to more look at what does it mean in terms of um, uh, uh, how much longer it would take to drive uh, through San Pablo Dan Road during peak hour in the morning and the afternoon. Because I think that's what people care about. How many more minutes or not is it going to take with one less lane of traffic? We have no funding for this yet, but the idea is the planning stage. This is where we start. Um, I will say that there's always trade-offs, right, between effect of traffic and, and effect of, uh, you know, an op op opportunity for a more safe way passage, as you know, it's a very popular yeah. route and um, um, it is not necessarily safe. I hear a lot from uh, the bicycle community about even the, the damn road, uh, along the Havos and Road. Uh, for example, after a winter storm, when there's a lot of gravel and other things that fall into the bike lane, it impacts bike riders. Um, and, it, you know, and, and, and it pushes the bikers sometimes out into a lane of traffic or closer to the lane of traffic, which is dangerous. Um, so that's an issue that we're aware of, and I know we send public works out uh, after a storm to try to really address those issues as quickly as possible. Um, you know, obviously long term, it would be great to have a bike lay along the creek. Um, we talked and looked at that for many years. It involves um, acquiring a lot of property, a lot of right of way, and a lot of uh, design um, Near the creek, so it can be very, very expensive. But I think it's a dream and a vision that a lot of people have. But we're focused tonight really on happy and way out to the reservoir. Um, so with that, I will turn it over to Jeff Valeros from our public works department. And I know uh, Jerry Fahey is also here. And this is a presentation of uh, of a of the of the pro of proposed project, what it would look like, and really the goals of your community input, not just today. But there's a survey that the county is doing between now and the end of January, and there's information we'll publicize. We're gonna, this is being recorded so people can watch this at their own convenience, so we're going to post it. This is not the only night this will get presented. We do have, I don't know how many people online, probably um, a few people, 15 people, so this is great. And we will, we will have the presentation, take questions from those of you first here, and then we'll take questions from people who are watching. And I do see Richmond Council Member Sohei Labana, who represents the Osobrani Valleys, 
here. So even though this is in the county area, it's good to see Richmond Council member here. Uh, because it impacts this would impact the whole valley. You know, I, I think of the valley as one community. You know, while part of it's in the city and parts in the county, um, it's really one community. And I think the goal is for the city and the county to work together on issues. Um, and um, you know, there's different jurisdictions. So with that, I'll turn it over to Jeff. And um, um, yeah, the whole study is link, link here and is available online. We'll make sure it's easy. We'll post all of this on our website. You can read the full traffic analysis. Um, and uh, again, this is sort of the starting point. So thanks. Oh, and this, there is this uh, information about seeking input from the community as well. And really, please get this out of your mind as well. Yeah, we'll put more chairs on. Yeah, we have one of the Let's see what we Oh, do Okay. Here, we'll get you some, we'll get you up. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure everyone's in here before we get going. Well, good evening, everyone. I appreciate you all staying the time for Wednesday night here with us. I don't have a map, so I can't really have too much weather. It's a slideshow. Yeah, there we up go. There, and we can play from the start. So I'll, I'll just have you say up the next slide. Do you want to move forward? Yes. Okay. Excellent. Um, did you share the screen to make sure the those on Zoom? Um, so it was only they should be able to see also. Maybe they can post a comment and confirm that. Can folks on Zoom see this study? Yes. I got some head nods. Good. Okay. Thanks. Okay. We're good. All right. Good evening, everyone. So my name is Jeff Valeros. I am the senior civil engineer over our Council Plus County Public Works Department. Um, my division, Transportation Engineering, is responsible for the planning and funding of capital road projects. So overview, just the presentation we're going to get today. A little int brief introduction, a bit of background about some Pablo Dam Road, although many know this road very well. Talk about a little bit more details about this road deck feasibility study, the next steps, and then just leave it open for Q and A and open discussion. Next slide, thanks. So, the purpose of this study was really to just determine if whether or not we can install um, bike lanes along San Pablo Road by implementing what we call a road deck. And I'll talk more about that information later on. Um, the goal of installing bike lanes would be to enhance safety, mobility, and access for all road users and move us closer towards what we call a complete streets environment. And what that means is that roadways are no longer just built for automobiles, but also for bicyclists, for pedestrians, as well as transit crews. This road diet feasibility study did begin in late 2019, but it was late, unfortunately, due to, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And as Brian Joy mentioned, the purpose of today's presentation, I'd like to present the findings of the study, the recommendation, as well as obtain your feedback. <laughs> So um, just want to make sure we're on the same page about San Pablo Dam Road and the context that we're dealing with. San Pablo Dam Road is what we classify as a major arterial road and route of regional significance. When we say arterial road, that means that roadways that move high volumes of traffic to and from freeways, and that the traffic function typically is of regional, county-wide, and inner-city importance uh, for safe and efficient movement of motorists and bicyclists, and rather than simply servicing uh, local traffic. And routes of regional significance are, in general, roads that provide major links between um, county areas, and they may serve as links between counties. So in our particular instance here, San Pablo Den Road is a major link between West Contra Costa County and Central County over in Arenda. Next slide, Ryan. Thanks. Some of the long-term goals that have been identified uh, for San Pablo Den Road through new maze planning documents and studies are for following, improve safety, comfort, accessibility, and connectivity for all users, uh, meet the needs of local residents living along the road, as well as those commuting on the corridor, provide a multimodal friendly environment, supporting all modes of travel, and encouraging a, a shift in trip modes by county residents and visitors uh, from motor vehicles to active modes, such as walking, biking, as I mentioned, uh, to create a more sustainable community and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Slides. Great. So road diet. Um, road diet is what we typically um, typically involves converting an existing four lane undivided roadway into a three lane roadway consisting of two through lanes and one 
center two way left turn lane. So kind of this little um, image that you have on the bottom left, kind of what we have on Sao Paulo down road, two lanes in each direction, and then repurposing the road to have just one lane each direction, the ability to make left turns, say, say into driveways, and you have extra shoulder width, which we could possibly repurpose either for parking or bike lanes, extra clear zones. Um, a road diet, a road reconfiguration may provide the following benefits, improve safety, calm traffic <laughs> speeds, and provide better mobility and access for non-automobile road users. However, it's important with any of our diet that in-depth analysis and engineering discretion is exercised, are exercised. Um, when considering, especially for roads that have more than 20,000 vehicles per day, because there are potential ramifications, um, such as increased traffic congestion, since there's really only one lane in each direction. So I wanted to show what a typical cross-section of a road would look like. I do acknowledge San Pablo Dem Road has very unique characteristics, so, but this is just simply for illustrative purposes only. So we have our sidewalks, five-foot sidewalks are pretty typical in width. They have a parking lane in the shoulder, and then four 12-foot travel lanes in each direction. By implementing a road diet here, starting from the curb of the sidewalk and moving inward, we can keep the eight-foot parking lanes have the three lanes in the middle. And with that extra width that we have, we could have five foot bike lanes with maybe a two foot buffer. Um, as part of this illustration, there's also the option to, to where you want to place that buffer, buffer, whether it's between the parking lanes and the bicyclists, or maybe the other way around where bicyclists can have a little more separation from moving vehicles. So a little bit more information about road diets and calming traffic speeds. Um, it's important that vehicle speeds when planning projects, uh, that vehicle speeds are matched to the context of the surrounding land uses, <laughs> such as the central business districts and neighborhoods, it's all road users. Um, sometimes this means that lower speeds are more desirable. The, these areas often typically have higher pedestrian bicycle volumes, in addition to younger and arguably older pedestrians and bicyclists. And so they need to calm or reduce vehicle speeds, is often cited the reason for road diet operations. Um, studies have shown that implementation of road diets have uh, led to a reduction in the eight percentile speed and uh, less than five miles per hour. And another study has also reported a 7% reduction in vehicles traveling over the posted speed limit. The source is listed there by uh, the Federal Highway Administration. And then specific to San Pablo down road, the most recent, most recent speed survey that we have on record shows that the eight percentile speed is around 60 miles per hour just to keep the closest lane. Seven, 15, uh, <laughs> and and after the and loudly, oh, and then we will try to maybe repeat it for everybody to hear. Yeah. So that does that mean that fifteen percent of the traffic is going sixty or faster? Um, correct. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> One of the things we That's hear a lot of complaints thing. about is the um, the sort of dangerous fast speed of many cars mm -hmm. further out on the damp road, and um, yeah. That that is something that like yes there, right yeah. so we but we I do know I mean for that pedestrians too pedestrians and cars yes yeah. so we we do get complaints about that I know public works as um, further out on the damp road right is not that, as much here but further out uh, is that at a particular time of day or all day long or all night uh, this <laughs> these speed surveys are typically measured uh, over a two day span like a typical Tuesday or Wednesday uh, condition. Oh, yeah. Great question. All right, so getting into the feasibility study of this road diet. Um, again, as I mentioned, the purpose of this study was to see if it was possible to sell these bike lanes through a road diet. There were three miles of San Pablo Dam Road that were analyzed from El Portal Drive all the way to Castro Ranch Road. Some considerations as part of a traffic study include peak hour traffic congestion, and that's typically for morning and evening commuters, uh, collision history, and change in travel time, so induced delay if we were to implement the project. Two alternatives were explored. to mention two project alternatives. So we have alternative A, which is at the road diet between Appian Way and Castro Road, Road, as well as a smaller segment for alternative B between May Road and Castro Road. Road. There were three time frames that we, uh, three time frame scenarios that we considered. So as part of our baseline, we started with 2019 uh, traffic models, and that typically reflects the pre-pandemic conditions. Uh, Near-term conditions, we kind of wanted to see what, if I implemented this project, what it would do in the, uh, within the next few years. And so an important thing to note is that the traffic impacts due to the pandemic are actually not reflected. It's something that's a little difficult to model 
um, with that quick change in traffic patterns. Um, however, the traffic modeling software did consider growth rate variables such as household size, population size, um, employment rates. There's a multitude of factors that are considered as part of the study. And to project from 2019 to 2025, there was an annual population growth of 1% compounded annually that was applied to the 2019 conditions. And for our future conditions, so this reflects conditions what we, what we expect to see by 2040 in a traffic model. And so this is pretty typical for county when we evaluate projects, because as our horizon year, just to ensure that traffic performance does not adversely impact much further down the line. And this is in conformity with our county general plan. Uh, same same uh, factors were considered. Pandemic was not as, as part of the modeling uh, of this. So, yeah, just one com comment. I asked this question. I, you know, go back to that last slide. How accurate are these twenty forty future projections? So I always find it, and when we're planning twenty twenty five is pretty close. I think we can get a good sense. But for me, when I look at something like this. Uh, I always ask, how accurate are these assumptions that give us sort of data for 2040? I mean, the, the world's going to change over the next uh, 20 years. Um, um, the, the modes of transportation will change, car patterns change. So, I mean, it's a question for me of how, when we look at 2040, what does that really mean? Yeah, so did you want to just respond to that? Yeah. We'll take questions at the end. Although, if you have a burning question on a slide and need clarification, ask me, okay? Yes. But on, on general stuff, we'll do that at the end. But do you want to just comment about that? Yeah. Um, so the model that was used by our consultants was um, an industry standard called Synchro. And it is, um, there are all the variables that they considered. By 2040, if we measure it again, there's going to be some variance and differences behind that. But it is, it is what they call a deterministic model. By factoring all these variables, they can have it be repeatable. And it is kind of what many other industries um, use. So that's the best, best uh, software that we have. I, I, I just have one yeah. question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, on that speed survey, was that done in 2019? I want to say it was done in either 2019 or 2018. Okay, because since the pandemic, I've seen the speed go up mm -hmm. considerably. Right. Okay. And and the and the actual CHP out there enforcing it has been a like one twenty percent of what it used to be. Wow! So it seems to go up. Oh yes, a lot. We can always do another speed survey. Mm -hmm. You know, update to another speed survey. Yeah. It's going to be more. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure how it works mathematically, but you say compounds one percent annually. Yeah. Does that mean in twenty forty we should have a twenty percent more, almost a twenty percent more or more than that? Uh, Growth of population. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's compound, so they expect yeah, it to be about 25. Not sure how it works now. Yeah. 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 Question on the source. On your yeah. forecast, are they using a baseline after the 2020 census, or are they using some of the pre census models out there? Because there's a lot of variation in outcomes. Yeah. yeah. The State Department of Finance. Smart group of folks are a good question. And this is something we definitely revisit with the model as the project grows. So I think that there's we're very likely to be a huge um, burst of growth with electric bicycles. And right now, it's a nightmare using electric bicycles. This would definitely lower the traffic if we if this became more practical. The other thing I think we might see is driverless cars, which will really change the whole way in which transportation happens with people sharing vehicles and so forth. So I think the future conditions must be taken with a gigantic grain of salt. That's sort of what I say to Jeff is like. I look at the 2025 projections to be more realistic and the 2040 projections to the, what does that really mean, right? And that you'll, and I think once you see the presentation, I, we just asked some questions about the methodology here. Once we get into the presentation, you'll see the projections in 2025 and 2040, and one could almost question, what is it going to be? Are these projections for 2040 really going to be accurate? Mm -hmm. yeah. More so to the future conditions, um, while well, these two, Projects are not necessarily in El Sobrani. 
They will affect the traffic flow in Milster Granite because the evening way is a major artery as well. So you've got a major uh, residential uh, project going up by the Hill Doctors Hospital. And then you also have another major residential complex going in on, on APN and uh, right. St. Pavel Avenue. Does these 2040 future conditions factor in the traffic from those existing about to be completed projects? There is a way for the for the traffic models to factor in future developments. And so it does look at land use patterns as well. Um, for those particular projects, I had, I had to get a hunch. It's probably not reflected at the moment in here. Yeah. You know, yeah. So when you were talking about the areas that, that you're going to put a bike lane between um, El Portal and, and Appian on Dam Road, I didn't see anything that there's going to be a bike cut there. Yeah. Why don't we go through? Right. You'll see. So we'll go through the whole presentation on the details and I'll inform the questions. Good. Okay. Go ahead. Good. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. I think we're on the next slide. Ronnie. Um, one more next. So, oh, and one last thing I'll say just on speed because I think it's relevant is, um, because a lot of folks do, and I, I just want to stress this point look at is what you know, the one of the one of the goals too is how do you calm traffic? Yeah. Um, right, because there's a lot of on the dam road itself, um, there is some um, been efforts. It, it, to to try to reduce speed and public works says you know you have to set it within certain parameters based on what the existing speed is and yes there is an important issue we get CHP out there as much as possible to try to enforce but there is clearly a speeding issue on parts of the dam. Excellent. So jumping into the next part of the presentation um, relationship to plans and programs. It's important anytime that the county scopes out projects that we are in uh, conformity with the parties and plans and policies. So I want to just list them here for completion. So we have our county general plan, which is currently going through its update right now up to 2040, 2045. We have our county active transportation plan, which looks at building out our bicycle network and pedestrian network for unincorporated county. Our vision zero action plan, which looks at reducing severe injuries and fatalities on our roadways. Uh, we have a complete streets policy as well as a climate action plan on helping to find ways to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Our condition management agency, which implements the measure J sales tax, that's the contra, contra cost of transportation authority. They have their cattle bike, bicycle pedestrian plan. And then on a more regional level, we have a West Contra Cost of Transportation Advisory Committee, which we, you may have heard called WITAC, and they have their own West County Action Plan. And so of these planning documents, the ones that have asterisk. I just wanted to bring out that these particular plans have explicitly identified a need for bicycle infrastructure along the public demo. Okay. <laughs> All right, getting into a bit more of the details, existing conditions. I think Hanley had questions about this. So, um, average daily traffic, what we're seeing here, it ranges from 11,000 to 31,000 vehicles on a typical weekday. And that starts um, starting from Castro Ranch Road going all the way to El Portal and begins increasing as many cars get funneled over to I-80. Two travel lanes in each direction, the intermittent untreated parking and pedestrian facilities, such as sidewalks and crosswalks. Um, there are no direct or parallel alternative routes to San Pablo Dam Road, which is actually a pretty key part of the study. Um, typically on roads with redundant networks and parallel roads, there's a lot of congestion. They can go to these side roads to kind of bypass. In our particular instance here, we really have Highway 24 and Highway 4. There's really nothing really that people can take on the sides. But the speed limit varies between 25 to 45 miles per hour. Current bicycle usage is typically observed throughout the week, but it is much heavier on the weekends. And the last surface treatment occurred in 2019, and the next will occur in 2020. I'm still working on that maintenance division. Some of that will occur. No. Apparently, yes. What's that? The earliest, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, just a few photos when our staff were out there uh, taking a look at the site. Cars parked along shoulders, really wide roadways, people having to cross just to access their bus stops, and there are some bicyclists that are out there. Okay. That's up. Um, just wanted to bring up our collision history along along the dam road. And so, what we have is from 2016 up to 2022 is what we mapped out. We can see that. Around 2018 and 2019, there's a bit of, a, bit of an uptick. Oh, wow. And then in 2020, uh, quite a bit of a reduction there, likely due to the COVID pandemic and a bit of a rebound from there. 
any idea why it jumped so much? Is that a reporting issue? Or I mean, that's like a 50% of the price increase. I think people come back out and drive. In 2018, 2019, I mean, is there any, I mean, I look at data like that and I say, okay, yeah, this doesn't look right. Is it a reporting issue? Do you think? Or... Um, so the question, to make sure our, our audience that virtual, um, is there a reason for the big uptick in 2018 and 2019? Wish I had an answer for you, Ben. Did that include bicycle? I'm sorry to interrupt, but. Does that include bicycle or is it just car collision? We're reporting by simplest and pedestrians are factored into this uh, to these numbers as well. And keep in mind, these are the reported collisions actually through CHP reports. So they could possibly be underreported mm -hmm. as well. One of the things I will say the collision data along the dam road between Castro Ranch and Orinda resulted in the in public works applying for and getting funding to put those those flexible cones in the middle because there were head-on collisions. Mm -hmm. oh, so we, we we heard from some of the bicycling community, you know, concern about those because I know when, when you drive out there, when you when you see those cones, it makes you want to drive a little more to the right, closer to the bike lane. Right, not to the right job. Mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. right. Yeah, that was mm -hmm. the issue I said at the outset. We is really public works is really working, especially after the storms, because there was around the county, there was a after these wind events, there were a lot of trees and things that fell, and they had to get around and clear those lanes. But um, so my understanding from public works is that those cones have been effective at reducing head-on collisions, which can be fatal. So that was the reason for the data supported the grant, right, which got the funding to put those cones in and to make that roadway safer, even though it does cause, right, cars to potentially um, stay away from that, which is exactly why that bike lane needs to be kept clear. So, you know, bicycles can stay in that lane. Yeah, and that's perfect. Anything you want to add about that? Oh, as you mentioned earlier, for any capital project, there are trade-offs that we have to um, consider for any particular project. So, for the head-ons, but there we have, they're having more complaints from bicycles. Another question on the scope for this, is this from El Portal to Castro Ranch, or did you go the yeah. It goes all the way to Castro Ranch. You'll see a pretty from little uh, map uh, from where uh, El Portal all the way to Castro Ranch. Road. So includes the downtown. So yeah. we're, we're over at Tri Lane. So just a little bit further, you probably would have had quite a bump up there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Very common. So how does this compare to other arterials? Is this uh, above average collisions, below average collisions? Um, Question. Yeah, so the question was, how does this arterial compare to other presumed county um, arterials? I do not have that information available, but I can get back to you on that. Okay. My contact information is there. Okay. I'll let you know. So we'll follow up with some of these things. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Okay. And going into the next one, um, this uh, is a count of the collision history by the cause. Probably not uber surprising to many of you. Unsafe speeds, improper turning, auto right away violations. Handful of DUIs on that list. What are auto right of way violations? That one is it's kind of a confusing term at first. I had to think about that a little bit. <laughs> when cars make maneuvers in front of others or pulling out of driveways, not yielding the proper right of way. Oh, I see. So a lot of those might be driveway conditions because there's a lot of obstacles. Possibly so. Oh, yeah. yeah. Changing lanes and intersections is illegal, so if you change the lane, oh. it's the one with the. Uh, Line. Oh, that would have to that. Line. Thank you. Slide. So there's a question about where the collisions were. Uh, so here is a map from El Portal to Castro Ranch Road of all the collisions that we have, colored by the severity, um, fatal, severe, other, other visible injury, complaint of pain, and property damage. Take what you want from this one. I, just, I think the takeaway for me was that there are collisions all throughout. It's a public no, no, no. One thing that I saw too is that those with more severe in injury were for, generally were further out on the damn road right. as opposed to in, which would make sense because though that's where the speeding really yeah. is. So this area had more severe injury further out. All right. And one, it also showed just the existing bicycle infrastructure that we have on record. And so the existing bike lanes are shown in the dashed lines here, that's all in green. Um, we have white lanes along Castro Ranch Road, 
as long as well as along Appian Way. Um, County is also looking into possible um, bike infrastructure along Valley View and Mainland. At this time, there's none. They cut through. Um, Okay, moving on to the next. So, can you look at that other one? So, it looks like uh, on that previous one that they would have to build the bike lane all the way down May Road, but if it's on that way, you've already got an existing bike lane. So, that if you saw that way, you've already got an infrastructure to get you to that one, whereas the other one you need to add infrastructure. Is that what I'm seeing? Uh, at this time, yeah, there, there are no bike lanes along May Road, so there would be other, we would have to look into that as well. Okay, thank you. Has anybody looked into like a bike path through the reservoir area? Through the reservoir area? Yeah. Uh, I mean, one's been on the East Bay Mud board. I know Sue, you were asked about that. Uh, <laughs> there is the old San Pablo yeah. Road Trail. Yeah. Yeah. I doubt East Bay Mud. That would cost a lot of money. You're on water, East Bay Mud watershed lands. It'd be a lot safer. Um, and uh, that would, you're talking the area. Now, the the old damn road that yeah, runs yeah. down along the yes, road. Yeah. No, there's been no dis there's been no official discussions. And I know in East Bay Mud, you know, it would take a long time. Um and it would probably cost a lot parks. of money. Huh? That's not regional park. No, it's East Bay Mud. Yeah. That is all East Bay Mud. So it's watershed, and East Bay Mud tends to be very protective of the watershed area. In fact, when I was on the East Bay Mud board back in the 90s, I remember um uh I we discussed, and I think we got the county to actually create no parking along the along the dam roads before your time in the county. I, I was before my time on the county because there was concern that cars were parking and oil would leak and then go into the, you know, and then contaminate the reservoir. So there used to be parking along the part of the road uh, by the reservoir. So East Bay Mud is very protective of water quality issues. And so opening that up is probably you know, for bicyclists would be, it would be a long, it's worth the discussion. Yeah, I, it's I, worth the discussion. I it would just say, it take a lot of, I'm just saying, it would take a lot of money, a lot of planning, and a long time. Yeah. I'm not saying we shouldn't have the discussion, but this uh, this is a different study, just to be clear. Yes. But long term, I hear what you're saying. It would be nice to create whole sample. I would never ride a bicycle out on that part of Dare Road. It's yeah, like yeah, death out there. It's terrible. Yeah. If they might recently take that whole fact, I mean, there's nothing stopping cyclists from going right. and using it today. From the old San Pablo Dam Road. For parts of it, right? The parts of it, right? They, they, they've yeah. gone beyond parts. Yeah. I think it's almost the hardest. Yeah. 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 It's, I mean, it's, you know, we'll have a conversation. Look, it's worth opening up that conversation with them, let me say. That could be a parallel effort to this, just to talk to them about that. Yeah, you can go there. Okay, we'll go through this again. Okay, move on. Okay, right. remember we got a lot of covers. So we want to do. We're gonna have a lot more. We got a lot more questions. Okay, questions. I am gonna get now into the weeds of the of the twelve minutes that we looked at here. Yeah. So, the road diet from Appian Way to Casheran Road. This segment is two point four miles. Um, bike lanes will provide a connection between the existing infrastructure on Appian and Casheran Road, as one of one commented on. Um. I wanted to talk about the change in impacts to the automobile, automobile travel time. So traveling between Appian Way and Castro Ranch Road in the near term in 2025 by implementing this project, uh, during the peak time, the traffic patterns are looking to increase as follows. To the AM peak in the westbound, up between 7 and 9 a.m., we had what, what's in bold in there, two minutes and 52 seconds in the westbound, and the eastbound, a minute 56. In the PM peak, or 6 p.m. westbound, we have two minutes, 16 seconds <laughs> in the westbound, 16 seconds in the eastbound. And then looking in. So let's stop and digest this. Right? Yeah. This is for me always, what, 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 what's the result? So, yeah, like you know, in 2025, okay, we do this together, right? So let's do it. So in the AMP, right, westbound, going from Orinda to, uh, to El Sobrante would take you. Uh, uh, Two minutes and 52 seconds more. So instead of a seven minute over this 2.4 mile stretch. So it takes somebody a little under three minutes more to go from Castro Ranch to Appy Way. And eastbound from Elsa Brown to Orinda, it would take um, almost two minutes more. So if you think about it, people coming from the Orinda area, probably going to I-80, something like that, are going to take a little under three minutes more. And then eastbound, and this is the Appian Way, 
the num you'll see the numbers are less if it goes to May Road. Can we set up roadblocks so they can't go at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although, do some of you remember many years ago, uh, Orinda removed a sign on Highway 24 <laughs> when you get off on the dam, we get off on Orinda that removed the sign that said Richmond. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that? And yeah, they to do an old damn road. Right. It, it's back road. up again. So they don't want people to know this is the way you take to go to Richmond. But that, that was, I thought, a little, uh, frankly, racist. But um, <laughs> it, it is no longer there. Um, so this gives you a sense. And then in the PM peak, right, it would take, uh, again, a Rinda to El Sobrante, a little over two minutes. But what's interesting, eastbound um, going through only about 16 seconds. So mm -hmm. I have a question about that. So do you take into account, so right now when you drive down San Pablo Dam Road, there's no left turn line. And people like are going, there's all the businesses that people turn into. And traffic's coming right. along and then people have to get over right. the right lane. Right. And that, do you take those delays of people who are making left turns and forcing traffic into the right lane? Do you take those delays in account when you do the baseline? So I uh, have a deaf answer, but just to note, a lot of those come up between El Portal and Appian Way. Correct. This study only looks at the Appian Way to Castle oh, Ranch. I so know. any of the delays in El, El Portal to Appian Way. That section has a full right and right. right. This way. right. This yeah. so we did not study this area knowing that putting a bike lane here is Right now is very problem problematic with mm -hmm. with that. I'm not saying long term. Mm -hmm. Right, right. <laughs> one step at a time. Right, so one step at a time. And, and this, so this study is asking way. I got it around. So that's all. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Okay. Well, one person speak at a time. Okay, that way we can hear each other. Yes. So two questions. Uh, the comment, the question about the left turns between Apian Way and Castle Ranch is relevant because many individuals do stop traffic as they turn left into the various apartments that occur. Right. So was that factored in? Yeah. So single models are able to factor in. I believe there are 200 driveways that were counted between yeah. Apian and Castle Ranch Road. The second part of that question, if you're slowing traffic down, going both directions from Apian to Castle Ranch, have you considered the impact on um, Valley View going towards EPA Way as being a diverted, diverted road to avoid that traffic. And you've got a high school that they drive by, what's the impact on that artery? Yeah. I don't have that question. I don't have an answer at this time. So, I mean, the question on behavior, so the question which we can't totally predict, right? Will somebody take a different route because something is taking two minutes more? Yes. Well, I think that's I think that's a, let me just say I think that's a subjective determination, right? We don't know exactly, and and the question is what will Google do, right? I mean, and in fact, um, to, to my sense is Google will right because a lot of people are you know move around based on that. If Google looks at if there's another route that also is a longer route, it may still take longer. They're going to calculate. Oh, it's two minutes. It's going to take two minutes more. But actually, this other route would, wouldn't save you because it, it's it's longer and will take you four minutes more. So there, you know, there's a lot of things we can't predict, right? We can't. And can we model? I don't know. Can can you model what impact this delay would have on other streets? Can you model that? There is a way to model that. Yeah. So that could be something to look at. But knowing that Google has a lot of effect now. Because people may make a subjective determination that they that oh this is this being busy, but then if they check Google, they may say oh it's not quicker to take the other route. So there's a lot of those factors. The screen we're looking at now is just alternative A. Yes. The idea of making a uh, bike lanes. What does that mean exactly? For two and a half miles and pointing out that that slows traffic down. That's right. That's, that's, that's all this is to show. Okay, so what, right. those bike lanes are where? This is like... These are bike lanes from Appian Way to Casco Ranch. There exists. No, a dedicated, really a dedicated bike lane. Like, like, making a real bike lane. This would be reducing <laughs> your lanes from two lanes of traffic in each direction right. to one yeah. lane of traffic yeah. plus yeah. a middle yeah. left yeah. turn lane yeah. and dedicated yeah. bike lanes. Doing the thing. Which, okay. I don't know, we, which we can show again what that looks like. 
Cool. Right. What alternative B or C? Oh, yeah. B is tomato, okay. but we're taking one at a time. Okay. And so I, I focus on 2025. I don't personally, I don't know how valuable yeah. the 2040 projections are. I mean, it's showing, it's showing instead of three minutes delay, four minutes, instead of a little under, this is interesting. Why is that less? Why is it less? In 2040 than in 2025. More people will ride their bike. Why is it a bigger No, I actually don't have to. Yeah. And then and then and then you can see this two goes to four, this 16 goes to 37. So again, parking is not impacted. That's the good news. No parking is impacted. Everybody gets no parking. So, I mean, I, I think there's a lot of subject, subject, having seen a lot of these, there's a lot of subjectivity to that. But, but we just wanted everyone to digest it. Okay. So you can say, oh, um, a, a bike lane, reducing the lanes of traffic would mean it, you know, in the morning it'll take you two to three minutes longer, um, depending which direction, right? And in the PM, it'll take you up to about two minutes. Yes. The, the big deal is we want more people to ride bikes. Has there been some kind of um, effort to model whether this would increase bike ridership? I believe the single model does not factor that in, actually. Because so that's the, kind of the point right. of the I agree. Model. I agree with you. So the, I think what you're raising, Sue, so which means some good data to get. Generally, is there data? that shows whether having a dedicated bike lane over not having one increases bike ridership in that corridor. In that corridor is a very key statement. There. And that's in that corridor. So is I think, is, is there a way to look try to get that data? I can follow that. Yeah, follow I think we can try because there may be studies that show that, oh, here's a corridor, not this one. For the, here's a corridor, we had no bike lane, Oh, now we have a bike lane. Over five years, we measured it, and bike bike ridership increased by a certain percent. It's interesting. My my son is um, a computer programmer, and he's taking a master's in computer science. And he just finished his term his term paper. Not, I read it. I'll just send it to you, Jerry. And it was what effect does weather have on bike share riding? And found that bike share riding uh, increased during better weather. If you didn't look at cyclists in general, but bike share, maybe because it's a different demographic. But it's interesting how weather impacted increased bike bike share riding. So I mean, if weather increases bike share riding, uh, good weather that is, maybe safety increases bike share bike riding as well. I don't know. But where's my, where are cyclists going to come from with electric bikes? My dream would be to be able to go to, from here to Orinda, mm -hmm. and maybe people coming from Orinda to. Right. This way, but I right. expect particularly that way. Right. And if even if we have this little bit that's better, mm -hmm. is that really going to make much difference when San Pablo down road is still pretty frightening for bikes? Yeah. Right. Right. True. Yeah, I think that's where trying to get, I think, I know public works have been committed to keeping that big bike lane clear after the winter storms, but where the issues have come up and where the winter storms resulting in things that get into the bike lane, not unlike very common thing that's happened countywide, not just here. Yeah. <laughs> and then why don't we, so we'll make, we'll get a finish up question on this slide, but then we're going to go to alternative, I think, BX. Yeah. We only have a few more slides, slides left. left. Okay, yeah, yeah. almost done. Yeah. We're almost done and we can ask, we'll get into a lot more questions too. So B is just to May so, Road. Yes, uh, May Road. So alternative B, studying a shorter segment between May Road and Cash and Ranch Road. The segment length is only 1.6 miles. A lot of the numbers that are here, we have to talk about them. But I mean, just general, you can kind of see in the 2025 conditions that the increase in the westbound is only 12 seconds um, in the AM, minute 20, minute 48 in the PM, and only two seconds is what the model is showing in the eastbound. And then so just a left delay. Yes, yes. And for future term conditions, we're, we're in, in the realm of about a minute in the AM peak. And then the PM peak, you have the worst of, of them all at 337, but only six seconds. So that's 1.6 miles, the total length appian is 2.4.
Correct. Yeah. The the overall travel time is still looking at at the end of cash for manager. Just to make sure we're looking at apples to apples here. Uh, so yeah. questions on this alternative. Well, that's good. Per mile, the other one's better. <laughs> alternative is better as far as the millions of dollars spent. Yeah. It was four point one right. million is roughly the cost on alternative A. Right. 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 This right. 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 To get a discount on a road test, yeah. limit. Can you explain? Can you explain? Um, um, because I asked this question. Uh, what makes up the three to four million project cost? Because we've gotten questions like, "Oh, does it just involve restriping?" So, well, can you explain? Uh, you know, what's the three to four million project cost? So, typically, there's about a surface treatment or a slurry seal that goes with it. If we were just to put paint or to grind out the existing paint and put. Um, this new paint, that scarring actually creates some confusion on the roads. I'm not sure many people who have driven on roads where you have that. It's terrible. Yeah. There you go. So the cost for the um, surface treatment is a big component of this. And if the surface treatment were aligned when we were going to do one. You were jumping the gun. Yeah, that is coming up later on. <laughs> yeah. But yes, there would be some cost savings there. Yeah. So. All right. Um, Promise I'm not going to read every single number here, but uh, this if that's all the other data on one chart, this, right yeah. Now. So project impacts of travel time, kind of mincing it to many different um, ways to view the information. So you have your three alternatives: no build, leave it as is. Alternative A, happy and way to Castro Ranch. Alternative B, May Road, Castro Ranch Road, and PM Peak, eastbound, westbound. And then these percentages that are reflected here are just the increase from the pre-pandemic baseline conditions. So. To go for alternative A, 722 in the AM peak to 955 is about a 35% increase. So that's how I intended this slide to be read. I just like the point. I think the huge takeaway in this slide is that there's not much difference in future conditions between the build and no build scenarios, right? Because we're anticipating this growth anyway with the model that we're going to have decreased travel times no matter what. Yeah, you know, let me say that is a really good point. Um, and uh, in fact, um, yeah, let me just look at this. So when we look at this, and we're assuming that all of this increase is happening because of the road diet, right? I mean, that's what's first, when you look at this, yeah. but in fact, with no build, right, there is, um, it gives you a sense of the differential. You see what I'm saying? Does that does yeah. that make sense? Correct. Right? Yeah. Um, it's it that is it that is important to compare it off what the future condition would be if you if you did nothing. So like uh, eastbound, look, there's uh, just looking at this. This is ten seconds. This is four thirty four, <laughs> uh, right? Versus four twenty eight, eight oh eight. Well, that's, oh, there's a little difference there. So you're looking at the differences there. Yeah. That's a good way. That is a good way to look at it, right? I just have to say, all of these numbers really concern drivers more. You have a room full of bicyclists, I think. <laughs> I think we're more concerned about figuring out what's, what's, what's the future of for, for the bicycles. All, all, right? but, Not all, all yeah, 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 but, but I all think, you know, obviously, when, when, yeah, you yeah. Know, when public works and the county look at this, it looks at what's the impact on drivers, what's the impact on pedestrians, what's the impact on bicycle riders, right? And, and, and so that doesn't that say anything about pedestrians or bicycles. Right. Right. I hear what, no, no, good point. No, I, I hear what you're this is going to this is showing driving. travel time increases to drivers. Yeah. Yes. And I think the acknowledgement on bike riding is it's a safer route, but the advantage also is it does slow speeds which is also out there, which is a good thing from a safety standpoint to both pedestrians and bike riders. And yeah. just take into account that there may be people who now ride their bikes instead of driving their cars. That's, that's what a road diet is hopefully gonna do. Right, because if I live yes. at the eastern end, or you know, Port Arindo, in the direction of the east, right? Which, uh, and I need to go to the supermarket, and I have a nice safe bike lane to do that, and it's only a mile to the supermarket. I'm more likely to ride my bike than I am to take my car. But does the model take those kinds of behavior changes into account? No, I believe no. So it doesn't talk about how many cars. Yeah, in other words, the mode shift. Yeah, and the thing in effect, the mode shift. Yeah. How, and we that would probably have to be taken from general studies. 
Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. in this model. Correct. Okay. Yeah. It's, a, it's a car centric model. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what we're with these track yeah. 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 that. Right. That's right. That's right. right. But I, I think, right. I think right. Data right. around the world shows that when, when you make it safe and convenient for people to choose an alternative, right. Form, right. 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 Correct. Induced usage. Yes. Right. Well, I was wondering if there was anything else that was studied um, with the different alternatives like fatalities or injuries of any kind. How, what effect is that was, on? Was on right, only thing right, right, right. The, there were a few slides that were talking about the collision history uh, along the corridor as well. But in regards to actually making the major shift, it's not like there's this particular magic number and we say, yes, we're going to make the change. So there's a little more community input engagement as we're doing here, just to make sure. But I mean, yeah, you raised some other points that these studies don't point. capture all the different impacts and, or benefits or costs, right? Like at the outset, we said, that there's speeding, and that speeding, and that high speed results in more collisions. So, to the extent you calm traffic, and that was listed on one of the earlier slides, it uh, traffic calming can reduce collisions. Right, but I mean, we I don't have data on that for this that's corridor. What I was right, saying, just, yeah, right. So if you get to that data, right, um, right. So is there a way to get data to say with different speeds or this? You know, how does that impact collisions? Um, there are extensive studies on that. I don't have that listed in this particular study, but slowing down cars has shown to reduce the severity of collisions. So that is actually you known fact. Okay, we'll go through, why don't we go through almost done and then we can go more questions? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Almost done. So, this is a recommendation from the traffic consultant. Doesn't mean, right? It doesn't mean this is the fun. There's a recommendation. Oh, we have to go through public work and the board of supervisors. No. This is, this is a traffic consultant recommendation. Correct. Yes. So alternative B is what was recommended in that study. And it's due to these factors listed here. Uh, nominal projected increases in travel time, vehicular delay, queuing of vehicles at intersections in the near-term conditions, uh, more manageable increases in travel time, vehicular delay, and queuing of vehicles at intersections in the future-term conditions, um, improving local bicycle circulation between May Road and Castro Ranch Road, expected traffic calming due to lane reduction. And I also want to include, this can start as a spur if this ended up being heavily used that we could still entertain um, a road diet in the future. Up to Abby. Um, I have a question about that. <laughs> so you're gonna do a road diet and you're gonna take it from four lanes to two lanes. Wouldn't it be better to do it right there at Appian at Jump Street so it ends up being faster? Because road diets, like they're already going to be, they already have a turn lane in the area that you should have the bike lane. But I understand you can't do it now. I get it. You're doing stuff that's not that from Elk Tell to Appian Way. But beyond that, if you want to narrow it down from four to two, if you start right there in Jump Street at the business section, that's the best place to start. Mm -hmm. Who's yeah. gonna ride a bike? Yeah, to between those two, just, like between. Yeah. Where are you gonna go? Yeah, yeah. Those are all good yes. points. Yes. We want to hear in the right. so These are the. We're gonna let's. We want to. We're almost done. So one more show this, and then get it off. Okay. Let's show the rest of the slide. Here, almost done. Right. I stayed within the slide. Right. 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 So <laughs> next steps um, in the handout. There is uh, in the handouts. There is the printout of the survey as well as a small version with the QR code that's listed here. This survey will be open until January 24th of next year, just to really gather that info. And so this, um, we intend to report the results to the community after close of the survey. And if this project is ultimately supported um, by the board, by the community and board of supervisors, where we have two alternatives to either pursue grant funding, so put it in sooner, or wait until the next surface treatment to kind of do it. I have a question for 2028. Oh, yes. <laughs> on that slide, I'm waiting the slide. I have a question about the slide. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's saying you flat out you're not going to do happy and way to do. No, 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 no. It's not saying that. Yeah. Like the that project that cost. Yeah, the cost yeah. yeah. This, is just, this is this is just a showing. This is what the project cost would be under alternative B. There's Correct. no decision. Ultimately, Thank Thank ultimately, Thank the board of supervisors is going to make the decision based yeah. on some recommendations working with public work coming yeah. from the community so this is just showing under that recommendation yeah. it's too late to go back to the consultant to get an alternative c which is <laughs> that the first section the Appian out to value to make that the, the first treatment and then like i said they make sense yeah they haven't so exactly. we have we have a an a and a b which are inclusive but right. you see that would be the first 
You're saying to, to look at, yeah. More west. Yeah. More west. Yeah. Yeah. More west. The answer is not that. You, you okay. can do it. You could do you could do more studies to get more numbers. Yeah, ultimately, I think mean, part of it is whether we do the whole thing or part yeah. of it. Okay, so let's we're done with the presentation, but let me just say we want surveys. We want a survey. Uh, let's do this. Let, since we didn't get questions from mom, let me see if there's any quick questions on any of this from the um, virtual folks. And so we're going to ask the virtual folks. We're getting some comments here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I did I did introduce Ronnie, who's on our staff. I know that I can to my myself. Ronnie, you can up do the cuss words. <laughs> yeah, we're going to say here. Uh, what, Ronnie, do you want to read the comments real quick? Uh, all 25? Or... Oh, well, sure. Uh, I, too. Uh, I, can, I can respond to that. Some of them are quick. Oh, okay. Three of them are just here. Uh, so, so please minimize it. Safe bike lane would definitely increase by ridership. It's fairly suicidal to ride the yeah. damn road right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I have to express my support for bike access, separated and barrier. I believe that we uh, cars don't deserve convenience over everyone's safety. My risk tolerance is much lower now that I have a young child. A dedicated bike lane exactly what allows me to access that area. And then I have to put my toddler to bed. <laughs> I don't see any. Come on, Did anyone ask uh, about why they're not extending the bike lane to connect with other bikeways like Amador? Yeah, right, exactly. Thank yeah. you. Which is not great. Right. So, so there, is, there are like plans on more extensive bike ways to connect, but you know, every project is sort of done. You know, we're looking at this segment, right? And some of this is enrichment. Other ones are enrichment. Enrichment has a plan to continue to increase its bike lanes. Uh, you know, it did a road diet on Barrett, right? I mean, uh, uh, I grew up near San Pablo and Barrett, so I, I know that area well. And I, I yeah, I, I drive up Barrett, and yeah, it, there's some queuing as you get closer to the freeway, but it hasn't really had this dramatic impact on people's lives, right? <laughs> the other main one is Marin. In yeah. Albany and Bert, right there. Right. That was four lanes. Right. That, right. that was four lanes. Yeah. It's now two. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Barrett Avenue is an example, um, uh, and and Marin Avenue are two, two examples, right? It hasn't caused any real major complications. And yes, may, does it take a little longer to drive? Maybe some people feel safer because it used to be really fast mm -hmm. going up Marin or on Barrett for that matter. Um, You've been very busy. Were there any other, any other questions here? And then we'll. Yeah. Um, just asking if a PDA of the presentation will be very yes. yes. Well, yeah, we'll have that on our website. Yes. yes. Well, but this whole presentation will be recorded. Yeah. I think that yeah. is the yeah. presentation. Yeah. This is Robert, you might be saying, I'm asking. Yeah. Uh, but I'd like to thank John for setting up this meeting. Um, we've been working with you know, your staff and right, the, uh, the doctor for the staff since 2019 right. uh, to get this going. So I'm super excited that we're at this phase and, and talking to people about this project. Um, but you know, in the interest of that, you know, span of time, I will know that there have been two people killed on this corridor, both pedestrians, since those conversations started. Um, one of them was killed in 2021 with a 67 year old Berkeley man the truck next street um, that was not named. And that collision did happen on that segment that, you know, is primary um, between Captain Ranch and May Road. You were here when we showed the slide and the collision history and all that. Right. 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 And the other fatality happened was in 2019. That person was a 38 year old man named David Gonzalez. That happened in the other segment between uh, May Road and, and Capian. Um, and I looked at the, the, the traffic study that was done, and it has a lot more detail. So I recommend sharing that so people can look at it directly. Um, but that traffic study did have a lot. It's looked at vehicle delay, it also did a really good analysis of the safety impacts. And it ranked the different uh, intersections and road segments based on whether they were below the you know, statewide crash rate or above. And the only segments that were above were on the part between uh, May and Apian, which is the you know longer segment. Um, and so many of those individual intersections that ranked above the statewide average were also on that stretch as well. There were outcomes that were recommended in a traffic study based on vehicle impact. Uh, for delay and travel times, but there weren't really recommendations based on safety impacts. And so I really want to make sure we're prioritizing that in how the analysis is done. 
in order to make sure that that is the high priority. One of the other things the study said was uh, whether we'll evaluate whether it's getting success based on how many more people are biking and walking. And connectivity is really key in that. So if you're not ending the project at a connection point with another bikeway or with destinations like where we are now, um, and you're going to have a really hard time, a harder time, you know, making that mode shift happen. So in terms of safety, in terms of like marketability, you really have to be working in this larger project as a priority and making sure those are evaluated at or at the same level as the car traffic index. And I would also point out that the safety benefit of a road diet is not with the bike lane, even though this is a bike project, it's not only safety for bikers. We can see safety impact road diets, especially for pedestrian traffic. Um, at those crossings because of fewer lanes to negotiate with. Um, and even for drivers, you know, with all those driveways, much less incidents of your granting, uh, we have a left turn. So I want to make sure we're selling this not only the bike project or the safety project for everybody, and the connectivity project. Um, I did want to note in the survey, which I just looked at, the survey only mentions the Castle Ranch to May road segment, ask people what they support or oppose it. Right. And uh, so uh, I'd really encourage you to update that too. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think the survey should look at, look at how people feel about the whole segment. Yeah. And I would really like to thank you for the transit uh, impacts and a great opportunity in that survey as well. I took the bus here, you know, it worked, but it could have been a lot better. And so I think biking, walk, riding, train, right, are really going to how you're going to make the big mode shift impact, not just anyone's person. But thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. So a couple things, comment. The assumption that everybody here is bicyclist is incorrect. However, I would say that the, we align on the idea of safety. So Tablet Dam is an extremely unsafe road. Couple questions with regards to the presentation. So when you presented the example of the road diet, the lane, the travel lanes, not the turn lane, the travel lanes decrease in width. So have you thought about the impact on safety because there's sometimes there's trucks and stuff going, delivery trucks going up and down this road. How does the impact going from 12 feet to 11 feet impact? The second thing is with regards to not including Bay Road to Indian Way, you already have a turn lane on the downtown. It would make sense if you're going to do the project to have the turn lane all the way rather than have it occur, then stop, then occur. I think you increase the risk of accidents mm -hmm. when the lane changes occur. At May Road. Um, but the last comment is I understand that in about four years, it's going to be a major construction project along San Pablo Dam with regards to EPA uh, putting in sewer pipes along the dam road. John, are you familiar with that? And have you, have you, do you have I don't know. I'll look into that. I think project. it's a good question to align yeah. what we do with what he's, with, uh, with right. what utility companies do. We could look, look into a major yeah. project. We could look into about, we could look into that. I mean, obviously. You would want to rip up the roadway and do things, you know, and, and then have it ripped up again. And, yeah, with, that's a good question. And, you will yeah. that. and I do think, you know, the, the, the issue you mentioned on left turn is 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 important. I mean, um, right, right now you, you have to take a left turn from a lane of traffic. Right. And there's uh -huh. potential rear and things like that. And and extending the downtown center lane out. I mean, in my mind, is it just my in, in my preliminary looking at all of this data, is if we we're going to do this, it would appear that doing the whole thing and not partial thing would make more sense. Yeah. Do some of my yeah. preliminary thinking. I was actually hear a lot of comments. What do you mean by whole thing? Meaning, yeah. meaning from Appian Way, not the road. I think the traffic engineer was basically on purely on these less delay by doing, of course, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure there's less delay if you do it just the afternoon way than this main road. The question is, is that extra incremental delay really an issue? No. Well, you know, well, that's just in terms of comment with regards to, we talk about the four minute delay. If 15% of the traffic is traveling at 60 miles or more <laughs> an hour. Yeah. So they do really decrease yeah. it, maybe to yeah. 55. Yeah. The conjunction to this project yeah. has to be serious, concerted, intentional efforts to slow the traffic yeah. from all the way from yeah. 80 yeah. to Casper right. yeah. right. I mean, we know that. And the question, the question is, I mean, isn't there data that shows that moving to this alignment with uh, this road diet and these uh, widths would reduce traffic speed. 
Would there data to show that generally? I think the answer is yes, but um, there was that threshold that FHWA sites of over 20,000 vehicles a day, and their reasoning behind that is just due to the impatient driver behavior that could possibly use that two-way left lane, center lane, bypass traffic. Oh, so yeah. that's just something that in their mind. And we want, Ronnie, if there's any questions online that we want to hear from. Yeah. Um, sorry, yeah. So why don't we start yeah. start the back? Yes, people have not asked the question before. Yeah. Quick, um, comment, and I think we just uh, mentioned it. You know, my concern, I, I totally support this. My only concern is that the inpatient or ready drivers, if they if they realize, oh my God, now I'm down in one lane, you know, the psychological of that part, and they start using that turning lane as a quote passing lane, you're going to have like obviously head on collisions or really disruptive drivers. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this plan could put, I've seen other cities use discs, they're about this wide, about this high, and they put them across the, the turning lanes just periodically to try to prevent someone from going like 30 or 40 through those um, to discourage using it as a passing lane. I don't know if that's something that could be looked at now to make sure we're not addressing that issue back here years later sure. if we have head on to yeah. downtown. I think my immediate thought is there are 200 driveways that they counted along this, and so yeah. there's, a, there's going to be a handful of those movements as well that need to be factored in as part of the design. We'll come up here to folks who haven't asked anything. Yeah, at the end? You, you yeah. asked? Was that? No, I didn't ask. Okay. Uh, first off, I think that's kind of a general question. Which lane do the electric bikes use? Since she's brought it up twice, are they going to be slowing down the, the car lane? Or are they going to be speeding up to the bicycle lane? It seems like to me that they're kind of an in-between speed, so this is just a... A general question, which lane are the electric bikes going to be in the street lane or the bike lane? Bike, bike lane. I'm used to seeing They're it in the bike fast. lanes. Oh, okay. Not that, 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 okay, well, that's good. Yeah. No, that. Okay, the other thing was, uh, when you said that um, the B cost, I guess it is, does that include build the cost there? Does that include building a bike lane down May Road? Are we talking about you ride your bicycle to May Road? Then you're going to cross the dam road cost. The hill this, this is just the dam road cost. That was the separate effort. Yeah, Road, yeah. not the other streets. Because it, it just needs to be like, in addition to like making, the fact that you're now you're off a bike lane and you're having to go something else that uh, in either direction at that point. But then if you decide that I would rather get back to the next bike lane, then you're winding up, up there and then going up to after you and then back down to get to downtown. It's like getting a lot more bicycling to get to the same place. So I, I would just say that overall, what I've heard today, I kind of like the idea of Appian Way to, to Castro Ranch Road as being the best thing. We're going to respond to the survey, right? And we'll update it to include... Yeah, don't respond just don't yet. Respond. Yeah, we'll right. modify yeah. that. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to understand because we talk about commuters and I don't know anyone who commutes between Pastor Ratch Road and Afghans. I mean, people commute to BART or they commute yeah. to further yeah. along to the Ohlone bike trail, but I don't know many people who are going to commute in this area. I understand this is a good... You're talking road. drivers or bikers? Bicycles. Talk about yeah, bicycles. Right, 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 right. That's what right. I think we're talking about here. And it's like there are most people commute going west, and we're not this just not being addressed. Like that whole period, that whole place to the to the frontage road, which still has no very very sketchy access, even to get onto this frontage road on a bicycle when you're going west. Like all of that is just not being addressed. Right. I, I think the point that's important that several people mentioned is that. The value of this is enhanced if there's a total bike network in West Town that connects, right? right? And I think we can do our piece. There, there are regional plans about all of this. We can do our piece, Richmond, San Pablo, that's to all connect. Mm -hmm. And since we're the, just the county, our piece is doing this, right? right. And then, but but the, in, there is planning to, to have this whole network um, and it is being done incrementally. Okay, so I have uh, two opposing positions on this whole thing. And uh, I'm happy to see, I would be happy to see a turn lane, you know, going on to the Honda Road, because that's where I turn. And lots of times, you know, I have to stop, and then the cars behind me, I'm like praying practically that they're not going to crash into me because of the very last second they're turning out. So that's that would be a good thing. I, I, as a commuter on a car, I, uh, when I go by the post office on Appian Way, where there is a, a, a continuous turn lane there, 
on a couple different occasions, I've been almost had head-on collisions by cars coming in the other direction that were going, you know, that were using it as a passing lane, as Anne Marie had had mentioned. So that how would we mitigate the people using it as a passing lane rather than just as a turn lane? Because otherwise, I could see a lot of head-on collisions going with impatient right. drivers. Going. I mean, is there history? I mean, I know. I'm going to check it. Barrett and Marin have not had the experience of that turn lane becoming a pass. So that's how, so I don't know if there's data to show how it can be designed or I mean I, I think here's I think it's easy to speculate the worst case scenario. It well, happens all the time. Come down eight at thirty-five four, miles four, an hour. Down what? You're going to get passed in the left. If you come down, down Apian from from yeah. Valley View. And you're doing 35 miles an hour, right, right, you're right, going right. to get passed yeah. in the left turn lane. Right, right. You're talking at, about at 60. Yeah. 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 So the question is, it sounds like there's different oh. patterns at different it hasn't happened. It happens all the time. It hasn't happened in Barrett and Marin. Sounds like it's happened in Africa. Because we have no we have no enforcement no. out here. Well, you do CHP is enforcement, right? <laughs> but I hear you. It's not as well, so the question is, how to address that issue to design or Speed enforcement? Belt in the right. in the middle, in the yeah, past, right, in right, the right. left turn. I think Jerry, that's an issue, right? We're all noting, and I know the back yeah. there. That that's the purpose of this input is here. Yeah, yeah. there are yeah. alternatives as well. So instead of making you know the continuous you know dash and dotted, we're right, 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 right. making thought bays at the streets and intersections. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. still in the first yeah. yeah. So yeah. actually, this is a question down yeah. here because. Um, so back in in the nineties, when Caltrans widened I eighty, there were all the lawsuits, and the settlement required them to have a continuous bikeway from um, from Emeryville all the way up the bridge. And the and and by, you're talking about that part of the Bay Trail. No, 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 no. This is the I eighty bikeway. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Okay. Caltrans yeah. is supposed to fund all. Of it. So that bikeway, and so they used the Ohlone Trail. So that bikeway essentially ends at Amador and San Pablo de Amaro. And there's a sign there that says I-80 bike. Right, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, right. and then it comes down to Appian Way. Right. And that's what I-80. So what happened to the stretch between Amador and Appian Way that Calpans was supposed right. to come? Thank you. Yeah. 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 I don't know if they be that. So we, yeah. we can look into that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. If we're, and I don't know. Caltrans has money. I mean, it's a good question. I mean, or, I mean, part of it's in Richmond, parts in San Pablo. Right. Most, most right. of it's San Pablo and the county, and a small part in Richmond. Yeah. So yeah, we, I mean, but I've always wanted. Yeah. In the meantime, that yeah. sign should come down because I hear you. No, I understand your question. No, right, like right. You were. Yeah, yeah. There is no big question. Right. And I'm not holding my breath because money from Caltrans. But you'd be surprised. So there is the tunnel. The fourth board huh. lawsuit huh. provided a huge amount of funding. And is that unaccessed money that we could access? There it is. Yeah. Jerry, Jerry's eyes are going out to yeah. public works, right? Is there more money that we can get? I mean, Jeff and his group are always looking for fun. Right, 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 right. Fair money. Yeah. But something happened to that money because the construction never happened. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Good question. Yes. Yeah. I'm curious about, do you have data? On um, what people's commutes are who live on the school corridor, and if not, how do you get the data to look at commuters versus recreational bike lists and the effect that that would have on reducing car traffic? Hmm. Um, uh, so the traffic, uh, the traffic engineer that modeled this, our consultant, um, I believe most of the commuters, that 11,000 that we're seeing is coming from that Arenda area, but that number does increase again as you go westbound up to El Portal, which was up to 31,000, so that's started pulling in the local traffic, eventually following today. So and you know, like, was, like where, back to Robert's point about the yeah. going to be, like where are they going? Do you have people like coming from... Uh, Castor Ranch Road for commuting to like the end of high school, mm, or are they trying to get to Richmond Bart or something like? And if they are trying to get to Richmond Bart, they're probably not going to run the bike because once you get to Appian, then you're up a creek, you know. Yeah. So yeah. your question is, did they do an origin and destination survey on the traffic? Well, the answer is no. Okay, let's one. Yeah, but they, they kind of have a best practice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 
in this particular instance, it was just seeing what the travel impacts were, and they kind of have to have a termination point, and they did choose the end of the hotel cash for the sake of the model. Um, in regards to, can you ask your second question again about vice was behavior? Well, I guess I'm, I'm curious if there's like a stated goal about bicycle behavior in terms of commuting versus recreational um, oh, okay. with the road diet. Like, mm -hmm. is it is it geared to increase one or the other, or kind of universally cycling? And then what's the impact on the community about that? Okay. Um, in regards to the infrastructure, it. It's built for both users at the end of the day. It comes down to just what the community actually ends up using it for. But it's important, though, as point was made, that the definitions are accessible as well. So I hear you fully about moving out the way to Again, all the changes there. Yeah, right. Um, I just want to agree with the sentiment that I think this really only makes sense if it goes all the way to Amador and continues through because it's just like, where, where are people going to use it if they're trying to be only to stop in the middle of that busiest section? Of the so uh, it really only makes sense if it goes all the way through, and that should be a big priority. But I also am wondering if there has been anyone looking at like physical barriers between the, the traffic and the bike lanes and different options, because like the only model that was shown on there, you know, shows the bike lane right next to the car traffic. And there's been like uh, looking at the Temescal project on Telegraph, where they put all of the, uh, the little parklets and the parking in between the cars and the bike lanes. It just made it so much safer for bikers. And I think that that could be something I'm like really consider here because it makes a huge amount of difference in terms of just like, you know, how people view that and if they're going to like feel safe, you know, using those corridors. When you have that bank of parked cars there protecting you from the moving traffic, was a really big difference. Yeah. yeah. So um, the, the second question, wait, which dealt the all into the first one. The second one. Oh my, oh my, now I went blank. <laughs> wow. You say the second one, I went blank. I just read it. So I just uh, physical barrier yeah. between. Yeah. Right. Well, was, so so there was at the beginning this this the comment that. That there could be other designs for the bike lane that had more protection than one option could be, right? The bike lane between the parked car and the sidewalk. So that that could that could be designed in a location as well, right? Yeah, I think one of the one of the tricky things that we just need to acknowledge that there are the amount of driveways that are there. So cars that are pulling out of their homes or pulling in, those cars can yeah. kind of the key. That vision, so we just have to keep that in mind. And for the first question, you're right, things make sense, more sense if you do the whole network. The, the, the challenge is that network also depends really a large part on San Pablo, City of San Pablo, <laughs> which we would want to work with them. We don't control their decision making. A little bit, Richmond, not a lot. Where um, does it? Where is it? So, so if you think, if you think, put one of this up, and I'll show you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Put, the, put the map up, and we'll show you the collision. Yeah. And and the question is, even for us in the county area, there is no immediate solution today for the business corridor. Right? It's a different mm -hmm. network. So if we waited to solve that problem, you wouldn't do this. So the reality is doing it incrementally helps build momentum to do yeah, that. Right. You know, we talked 20 years ago about a trail along the creek. Um, it, it, and during redevelopment, we were looking at, do we, would we want to do eminent domain? You know, we didn't have eminent domain power because we set up redevelopment. Now we don't have redevelopment. You need permission from all these property owners and the design on the creek to be, if you look at models like this, um, they're, they're complicated. I mean, the perfect solution is to get it off the roadway along the creek, but that that would take years and costs to figure out. And I think that's something to continue to look at, but getting this piece done at least starts that. And then for this, you can see this is Richmond here. This little section is Richmond. Oh, wow. So if you look at it, here's, uh, yeah, this is sec here's Richmond here. So Richmond here, so there's El Portal, right? So there's a little stretch of Richmond here, and basically th this is Richmond. They, this dark area. Um, and then this is county, and then this is San Pablo. Mm -hmm. So San Pablo is pretty much this, there's county, this is Richmond, and this is all county, and then this is Richmond as well. Um, oh, yeah. oh. Like you need to see an increase in bike ridership on this project 
So let's say we complete this project and you need to see an increase in bank ownership in order to consider any additional projects. Is there a way to like just say, like we know that there is this failure mode with this project where it might not increase bank ownership until part B is completed? Like so part how do we what or, and what happens if you don't see that? Like, do you get rid of the bike if you don't see it? <laughs> we just found that was our methodical approach to just build that incrementally. That I mean, we can change our methodology if that if there's a better way to do so. But really, we wanted to see if we start somewhere. Will we get increased ridership? It looks like there are yes. users. We build that. Well, you get it. You can't just ride your bike recreationally yeah. if you're commuting. Right. right. So you can't just sit up and out and say, okay, good enough. And yeah. I'm going home. I get on the bus. You get yeah. to work. And it's all the way in Berkeley. And so, yeah. That's where the, the blind side is. Many years of going to Berkeley, the there was something called dual carriageways in the United Kingdom, yeah. which had three lanes where there was a middle lane that was the overtaking, which is what would happen with this bike diet. And they were abandoned because they had a lot of high speed head on collisions. So I'm not sure about if there being some real research done, would it actually increase the safety um, that, that we have? Or could we do something much cheaper by putting berms? Because there's actually a much older in much of the San Pablo Road. Because I've ridden it a lot between Arinda and, and my house uh, up on Clark Road. If you have berms to stop traffic just kind of veering in, that could be a much cheaper way of doing it. And has that been considered? Berms where? But along between the traffic yeah, and yeah. what well, and the shoulder. And the cyclists. And the cyclists. So basically just kind of a vertical component to yeah. make a separate yeah, We, calm, we yeah. didn't talk about that. Yeah, there is just that issue again with the driveways. But um, there can be other people broke it. It doesn't yeah. happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but it discourages people from drifting into the bicycle lanes and makes it feel a bit safer. A lot safer. Um, that's something that we can look into as to what that, if we do pursue the vertical element. What but, but also the safety of riders for the relay, by relay diet. I am to be saying that, you know, we're giving space people's commute time in the set of 6, 7, 30 to 8, 30 in the morning, it's nice getting into a render. It's unpredictable. People get angry about it and they already go along the shoulder. And all kinds of crazy stuff, and I think we'll use that central line for that same reason. And th those again, those are a handful of the trade offs, and we right. really want to hear from the community as to what exactly is the characteristic that they want for this particular road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bring you back to where, according to our people, you can fight too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're there, you can be Hi. Hi, I'm Nancy. I live on the main road. Um, I've been living in El Salvador for about 20 years. And I just want to make sure that we're addressing the unsafe speeds, the speeding, and the crashes, the near mixers on the M Road. Um, it seems like every month on next door, there's you know, people posting about a road rage incident and how people are using um, uh, the turning lanes as passing lanes, especially as we go further uh, towards Arenda. Um, so I just want to make sure that we're specifically addressing um, those uns unsafe speeds. Um, and then also, I want to highlight there there are uh, sidewalk gaps right now from Bay Road to Apian. Um, I used to ride my bike and walk to the library as a kid, and the same gaps are still there. Um, so I want to make sure that we're um, building sidewalks in conjunction with the bike lanes. I know that this is focusing on bike lanes, but um, really want to make sure that we're um, Keeping in mind pedestrians and cyclists, and then also just echoing what a lot of people have said here, um, making sure that the bike lanes are connected. I, uh, you know, would ride to Bart bar as I get older. I'm becoming a little bit more risk reverse, and so I'm just really avoiding down them. So um, as a cyclist, I, <laughs> um, um, but just making sure that the bike lanes are connected. That they do lead somewhere. Um, the study area. Right now, it's just too much. Of, it's just too much of a gap for it to really be useful. And um, I acknowledge that it's a starting point, but it does need to be connected right. to the planned, um, the right. planned bike lanes, and also just um, other things. Right. Make it really more I, you raise a lot of good points. Again, yeah, the issue I always raise is um, that 
when you have multiple jurisdictions, right? There's no one way, unfortunately, to get all of it done at the same time. But one entity doing it can sometimes provide the momentum to get the next agency. I know if I just pay see that a lot, is that one moment, one agency doing it can provide momentum to the same But then other get nothing. I mean, I think our piece of it, you're, and you're right. I mean, that's that San Pablo piece to get to Amado is really important. Um, I think, you know, working with them and trying to encourage them and, and even the small Richmond piece. Um, There's already bike lanes in both of those spots. Sorry, San Pablo and Richmond. That's already has a bike lane. But I don't think sure. But yeah, so, yeah. how much of San, how much of San Pablo Van Road in San Pablo has a bike lane? Oh, um, I'm talking I was talking about it by the freeway. Yeah, and I'm passing right here. here. I didn't realize yeah. you were talking about that. Yeah, so this is like so much. This is uh, much of this is San Pablo. So I, I didn't, yeah. You yeah. didn't say that. Yeah, right. yeah. So that that's the piece. In fact. Um, for our area here, yeah, I'm sorry, this is San Pablo. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so eventually, this if we, we stop here, our big piece is trying to figure out downtown. And that's and then that's, you get Richmond, and then you get San County, and then you get San Pablo. Like for this little stretch here, we would work with we would need to work with Richmond, right? For this right. little stretch but that's here, it, right? Other than that, on, right. on our good. city area, that's the only yeah. rich only yeah. Richmond thing we need to worry about. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. small section. Um, and then here, or over here again, this is San Pablo. Yeah. But I, 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 I mean, obviously, you know, we're I'm focused is what can we do with downtown? You know, yeah. that's a really it's different it's, issue. Yeah, it's a big one. Um, and I don't have a, an immediate solution. And there was acknowledgement, I think, before you arrived about the collisions about how to improve traffic speed in downtown. Just a brief comment about downtown. When, no, people brought up uh, Telegraph earlier. The Telegraph's design works to some degree because it's largely a commercial area. That design, I don't think, would work from a stretch from uh, APN to Pastor Ranch. However, downtown, typically people don't park a lot along that downtown corridor because, you know, it's legal, but because the traffic is so fast and you're, you're, you're risking your life to get out of your car. So the idea of you know, creating you know a, more parking opportunities along the dam road that are off the street right. uh, creates right. opportunity to yeah. have a, yeah. a bike lane. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean if you got rid of parking, you can create a bike lane. But there's not yeah. much right. parking. Right, right, yeah. Yeah. right. 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 Even though it's legal, right. yeah. there's not much yeah. parking. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 we set up redevelopments years ago. That do depend on the parking. When we set up redevelopment years ago, we one thing we looked at is there a way to try to uh, move and create these off street parking? Because you know, there's these individual lots, and, and it would make sense almost for property owners to get together and build something that would more. Yeah. It, it, where, or, I mean, you have these individual lots that don't make a lot of, I mean, they're small and the park, there's not a lot of parking. It's just, it's a challenge, right? And uh, is anybody online that has a question? Is there a rate? If anyone online that has a question, uh, raise your put the raise hand function. Yeah. So will speed limits stay the same with the road diet as they are now? Would speed limits stay the same with the road diet as they are? Uh, but once they're installed at that moment, yes. Um, it's Jerry, unless you want to talk about how we set our speed and how to get a lot of So I'm kind of here so we can sure. set up. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jerry Pham, also with Public First and Jeff. Um, but yeah, speed limits are set based on the 85th percentile. Um, if we would do a, a complete road redo on this, we'd come out and do a new speed survey. So it would be eventually. Yeah, yeah. Even that, I mean, we'd probably do it right. after right. the after the construction. Right. Anybody else online that has questions? Yeah, Will has a stand up here. Will? Uh, can we Will. Uh, yeah, hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm going to make a comment that. Um, this this plan has this study was done in 2019 and it's been kind of looked at by a small study group for the last four years and uh, people are bringing up a lot of good points about a lot of other issues but i think i'd like to see this thing move out of its first phase after four years so i'm just from all the talk i am strongly in favor of alternative a so we could have a at least a connection complete that section and and really start working on all the other problems, but kind of not get bogged down in all the problems. Just 
focus on this for today. Thank you, Will. Yeah. Are there on Monica? Monica? Uh, yeah, just really quickly. Um, will the proposed plan at all permit the inclusion of sidewalks? This may have been asked, but it's very hard to hear. So um, question again about that the section is it, it's super yeah. hard to walk that section yeah. i was there today i don't you just feel like you're gonna get killed good question so i'll have public works to address that because a, a lot of the failure of sidewalks is because the county also doesn't have own the right of way right along all of san pablo dam road and some of those segments are privately owned so do you want to talk about that jerry yeah i did i missed the section that she mentioned so the question about can we do sidewalks? There's a lot of sidewalk gaps. Yeah. Can that be part of this project? Quick answer is yes. Um, or just start attacking those now. I think when you mentioned the sidewalk gaps, um, I made a note of that just to start seeing if we can do smaller projects just for sidewalk. What you know as this moves forward. And now so the areas where they're not sidewalks, we what what amount of that property is owned by the county right away and what is private? It's all different. There's, there's probably there's probably not one property that's the right. same as the next one. So, so the part of the complication is if we don't own it, we have to work with the property. We have to work with the property owner and get ownership of it, right? right. Um, so and then there may be design issues. So yeah, we can try to do that as part of this for pieces of it, but it's not going to be a magic easy solution. <laughs> And over in transportation, we acknowledge that there are sidewalk gaps that we're looking to close up. We did close, I think, four of the gaps along San Pablo Dam Road, one day about four years ago, four or five years ago. Um, it's just kind of the nature of a lot of the roads, the old school design, didn't really factor that in, but we're working our best as part of our complete use policy to find where we can close those gaps. Isn't that part of that safe pathways to school? There's a safe route to schools. Yes. It's very competitive. There's not a lot of money on that. That is not that paid for what we have on Dam Road now. No, I don't think that's I don't, no. I don't think that's the safe yeah. route to school. The sidewalk gap closure project was actually funded through a child trans grant called Highway Safety Improvement Program. So we actually took the collision data based on that and then we went for that. I mean, there's not, you have to also, you're competing against sites where we're really close to schools. So I don't know how the Dam Road sites compete. In that way, it's not like there's a lot of money there. Too. Yeah, but it's to it's going to uh, Sheldon, right? Yeah, Sheldon. Um, but they're all. Hello? We have no audio. I'll second that, no audio. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we can talk are. with ourselves. <laughs> hey! Yeah. All right. I'm a little concerned that they're getting trying to solve every problem and not the one we're supposed to be talking about. Yeah, well, that's it that's how meetings go yeah surprise i know that's it i guess we got cut from the meeting is what it sounds like well, let's see yeah the view changed uh let's see if i go to view can i get the speaker back no oh, you're the speaker there's ronnie oh ron mills can you hear us 
It's like he can't hear me. There we go. Thank you. One last question. Yeah. Uh, email our office or put them in the survey first. If you have other ideas, email Ronnie. Um, but put them in the survey. Anybody else online? Hey, if anybody wants to help clean up with us, here's some postcards that are they're in Saturday cleanups here. We try to keep the, the streets clean. Which section is that? Downtown? Uh, are in our right of way? Putting my name.